Hey guys, just wanted to film uh, me taking apart my Spyderco Southerd here. Uh, it's gotten a little rough, it's not so smooth to open and close anymore. Um, just to show you, usually I can push with the lightest pressure just enough to overcome the detent and it'll open the knife. Now it's, um, it's slowing down quite a bit. I, I don't know if you can hear this, but uh, it you do hear some scraping and some almost like a grinding as you open and close it, so I'm just going to do that slowly here. So, don't know if you can hear that or not, but uh, take my word for it, it's rough, it doesn't open with the same minimal force anymore. So, I'm just going to film myself uh, taking this apart here. Sorry, I keep hitting the uh, tripod here. My apologies. But uh, so anyway, this is a T10 here for the pivot. Looks like we had some uh, clear Loctite on these screws here it seems to have flaked off just when I take it apart so just giving that a tap you see some fragments falling side so I'm gonna separate the screws as if I put the knife like this so the screws from this side put on the left side and vice versa Okay. Anyway, now that the pivot's out, you can see both pivots on both sides. The centering is now completely off. It wasn't before. Centering was good before. But uh, yeah, now that both the pivots are out. Um, okay. I'm going to try and be careful because I know this is uh, runs on some bearings, and I've never taken apart a knife on a bearing system before. So I want to be careful. I don't want to make any mistakes here. That was too big. And sorry for the awkward angle here. I'm I'm kind of arms are intertwined with the tripod here. And just so you know, for the handle scales, this is a T6, so a Torx size six. I'm not going to take the pocket clip off because I don't believe that that's necessary to take this knife apart. There's actually a good crack, a good seal to be broken here. I've uh, only lightly carried this knife, by the way. It's uh, never seen particularly hard use. Uh, I baby this knife a little bit because it's one of my most expensive knives. Um, but it does get used and it does get carried nonetheless. So you guys may be thinking it looks like it's in good condition. It does because it is in good condition. But uh, it's just never been abused. Just light, light cutting tasks, your daily chores. I haven't gone out of my way to really abuse this knife. Okay, so just upon taking this uh, last screw out here, I feel the knife literally slide apart uh, in my hand, almost as if you grab a hamburger, a really thick hamburger, and you just squeeze it together. The layers start to separate, so I'm going to put it back like this. Okay, so the layers are already coming apart on me. So I'm going to apply some light pressure. Okay, so actually that scale came off there just by picking the knife up. Um, this may involve a little bit of effort here. I'm just uh, trying to pry a little bit. Okay, so I seem to have separated it there with my fingers. Okay. I 
And one thing you guys uh, may notice right here, this ledger hole, this is the spot that was allocated for the lanyard tunnel. Um, that was taken off by the first owner of this knife. Uh, it's something he didn't like, so he got rid of it. Um, I don't mind at all. I mean, it makes no difference to me. I can still use a lanyard through the same hole if I want to. Um, yeah, it literally makes no difference to me. Um, but I agree with him. It, it, I don't think it looked as good with the lanyard piece in there. But uh, there's quite a bit of gunk on here, if you can see that. So I'm going to see what I can do about cleaning this up here. I'm just going to take a Q-tip with a little bit of water. I'm coming in front of the camera. And I'm just basically going to scrape very lightly on the top of this lock bar. Mm. Okay, seems it's not staying in focus, but I mean, there's a lot. There was a lot of gunk on there. Lock bar wasn't necessarily sticking, but uh, I did notice that that was dirty. I could clean this more, but I don't want to spend a long time necessarily doing this. I just wanted to get whatever loose gunk off that I could. Uh, by the way, this uh, G10 insert comes out quite easily there. I'm going to put that back in. I'm not going to fiddle with that. And there's also the uh, uh, bottom standoff here. And um, I'm uh, you could probably take it out. I'm not going to try to. I'm just going to leave it in there. Um, because that's not my focus. My focus is on making this knife smoother because, yeah, it really wasn't all that smooth when I took it apart. So, if I can carefully pick this up without letting anything fall, you can see there was a decent amount of gunk in there. Actually, there's quite a bit. Um, it seems like there's this almost like a stainless steel washer, and that goes against the handle scale, and then the bearings are underneath it. If I remove that washer, and then you can see the bearings exposed there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently put this down. And I just want to look at this uh, bearing here. So it's actually, it's a concave. It's not perfectly flat. If you can tell by the shape, it's rounded, almost like a little bit of a bowl. I'm just going to rub this with my fingers here. There is some gunk coming off of it. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to put this back in the handle scale here. I don't want to lose that, obviously. Okay, uh, next in the sandwich was the blade. So on top of the blade had these uh, washers, or this, these uh, bearings on top. Don't you get a look at that? And these actually stick out. I believe, yeah, they stick out more on the right-hand side of the screen right now, uh, which is the side that is in contact with the blade. These actually look clean. These look very clean. So I don't really want to fiddle with this. Yeah, I don't want to fiddle with this. I don't want to do any damage. I'm going to put this back in there. Now... Let's look at the blade. The blade, oh, this is very dirty actually. So, hopefully, you guys can see how dirty this is. It's just pocket lint from my jeans and whatnot. Actually, even along the bottom lock bar, yeah, it's quite a bit of crud on there. I'm going to attempt to quickly scrub that up here. I'm just going to take a little bit of a damp q tip again. Do some light scrubbing. Sorry, this is not focused well. Keep moving around. But uh, it's nicely polished on the lock bar on the bottom, and there's actually a nice angle, so this uh, this should handle wearing very well. It's a well-designed knife. So much gunk. This is really dirty. I'm going to use the already dirty side of my Q-tip here, and I'm going to do a clean all around the outside first. And then once my Q-tip's even more filthy, and you can see, it's pretty nasty. 
I'm gonna flip it around and go over this side. The stone wash on this blade is beautiful. I love the finish of it, it's so smooth. Okay, so now that I do that, I'm gonna put it in this channel here. I'm just gonna give it some twists. Go all the way around. Okay, and then I'm gonna put it in the middle. Do the same thing right here. So now that I've done this sort of like in a rough manner with the hopefully focus, let me get this here. With the very dirty Q-tip, as you can see now. I'm going to take it on the clean side. And I'm going to go with the clean side of the Q-tip to remove any more residue. Anything that I can. I'm going to go over the lock bar again and apply some pressure there to aggressively clean that. The little nooks and crevices. Do the same thing. I'm twisting it almost as if you're cleaning your ear with these Q-tips. Okay. Like this. So, I mean, it looks like it's cleaned up quite a bit. I'm just going to quickly dry this. It's a little bit damp right now. I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel here. And with this piece of paper towel, it's going to clean this portion of the blade. Any more dirt coming off? I don't see any more dirt coming off, so that's a good sign, definitely. Okay. Very good. You could probably hit this with some compressed air if you want to. I'm not going to go get mine, but you could do that if you want to. Actually, see one more little piece of kind of crud in here along the bottom. Somewhat OCD about this. Okay, so now it's gone. Okay. Okay, there's your knife blade, which sits in your handle like this. Um... Should I put it like that? Yeah, maybe I'll put it like this. Let it sit. Actually, you know what? One more thing I would like to clean. If I can gently take these bearings off and the washer off, put those back on top of the blade so I don't forget how those were. I'm going to clean around. Sorry, that was in the frame. I'm going to clean around where. The knife rotates. Actually, I'll take this G10 tab off because that was just falling out. Actually, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do kind of gently with a Q-tip here first just to remove any big particles, and I'm just going to take this with the paper towel, actually. And just wash right around there. This lock bar was really dirty, actually. Top of this lock bar. Yeah, it seems like the top of the lock bar had some sort of coating on it. it. Seems like it's wearing well. Actually, I don't know if you can see the coating. Let's put my light on here. Almost like a bronzish color on the tip of that lock bar. And then you see the slightest bit of wear just on the inside there, which is where it uh, grinds against the knife to engage every single time. So yeah, that looks like it's wearing well. Um, I've carried this knife quite a bit, so I mean it's in fantastic condition. This is the first time I've taken it apart. Obviously, as I mentioned that earlier, but the first time to really clean it. So now I'm just going to take this paper towel. Let's go around this pin. Try not to bend it. <laughs> I'm sure it would be difficult to bend, but... Yeah, and you see there's some, some dirt coming off of that. Okay, now I'm just gonna dry. Okay, I'm going to put this G10 tab back in. I'm gonna put this back down. 
and then I'm going to put the bearings and the washer back in with that side of the handle. Put the knife there, the blade. Actually, I should lube this up. Um, now, this is just some hops gun oil that I have lying around here. And just to see, let me add a smidge, see how this comes out. So it comes out, okay. I don't know if this is meant for this. It's probably not. Hopefully I don't ruin anything by doing this or cause problems for down the road. Will this focus? Let me see. Let me reposition. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little drop of oil. Actually, that was a big drop of oil around there. Drop the G10 piece there. I'm just going to rotate this around. I want to move that oil around. Hopefully this stays nice and slick. I want to put it all around that uh, pivot there in the middle. I'm just rotating it like this. So now you see it's, it's really moistened up here. Pick up that G10 slot that fell. Okay. I'm just going to put that there. I'll put that on after. Now I will go ahead. And actually, I'm going to take a new Q-tip. Take some of this oil that I just dripped on here. And I'm just going to apply it. Actually, maybe I should apply some oil directly to the Q-tip. Never used this oil before. It's for some new firearms that I have. I don't have much experience cleaning, but I figured this would be a good product to use. Okay, pick up this blade here. And actually it's applying quite a bit of oil. I don't know if you guys can pick that up. But yeah, it's moistening this up with oil quite a bit. Put that down. Hopefully it doesn't get too dirty. I'll use that on the other side. Let's put the uh, blade back in here. Okay. The other side. Okay, now let's take a peek at this side. Okay, so these standoffs are ready to fall out any second now. I mean, they're loose, so I can just literally take them out here. Actually, maybe I'll gently take them out. Keeping them in the same order that they were. Not that it probably matters. And I'm going to take the paper towel and give this a wipe. Just the inside of the knife here. Not necessary for the functionality, but just to clean it while it's apart. Okay, so you got some dust and whatnot coming off of there. Now, okay, let's take this out. Same system on this side. As you would have imagined, your, there's your stainless steel washer and your, uh, your bearings. Alright, one thing I'm going to do that, I know it's probably not a big deal whatsoever, but uh, what knife should I use? I'm going to use, use my Benchmade brush here. Um, as you can see, this was cut from obviously a strand of these plastic inserts for the bearings. So once this focuses, you'll be able to see there's a little tab hanging off the edge here. I'm just going to trim that little tab off just because um, it could probably cause a little bit of extra friction in there. So just very, very gentle pressure. A nice, pretty sharp. And you can see it clears that tab right off. So now hopefully that will eliminate any uh, unnecessary friction we had in there. Now I'm going to put this back. Um, before I do that, I'm going to give this a little rubbing with my fingers again. As I did before, any uh, crud maybe I can remove a little bit from here. I'm um, going to add a little bit of oil. Again, add a, you know, I don't know if this is necessary for this. I'm just going to drip a teeny, teeny bit of oil on here. Just move it around with my finger around there. Okay, so now this has got a coating of oil. I'm going to take the bearings in the same. Uh, way they were before. I'm just looking which side sticks out more. 
put them back. Put this back in the handle. Just like that. And then the other side, is, it, is there anything to clean? No, there's not really anything to clean there. Um, there's the lock bar. It, it can come out. It does actually just slide right out. I'm just going to give this a quick rubbing. And this is just a lock bar here, the paper towel. Let's roll it around. And yeah, just get some dirt coming off of there. But uh, that wasn't really a concern for me. I just thought I'd clean it again just because the knife's already apart. So I'm going to realign these handles. I'm going to put the stop pin back in. Um, and I'm going to take and I do one more dab of oil. It was a large dab. And what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to grab a toothpick and uh, just move this around. I'm going to try not to get it in the actual screw hole here. Zoom in so you can see a little bit better. If it will focus. Okay, so I'm just going to move it around to any spot that will be in contact here with the uh, uh, titanium frame. So that's quite a bit of oil and I'm, I'm sure that will dry off with time. Um, I know leaving that much oil will only invite pocket lints to accumulate, but uh, it's not my biggest concern. Um, just to mention also these backspacers, um, they're not perfectly cylindrical on one side, so on one side they are flattened out which will correspond to the interior of the handle, so I'm going to position them how I think they will fit smoothly. Okay, I'm going to take the blade off. Put the blade in here. And like so. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a small, oh, another large drop of the oil and I'm just going to put it around here. I'm not going to necessarily, well, I'm not going to intentionally put it around the detent hole or in the detent hole. It's a lot of oil. Maybe I can take a little bit off. Just a little, actually use my Q-tip for that to be a little bit more precise. Just like this. Okay, so you see it's quite a bit of oil on there. And then I will turn this back over. I'm going to use the Q-tip to hold the bearings from falling out. Oh, actually, I'm very quickly just going to check the bearings because they didn't look like they were positioned the same way on the other side. So now that there's the oil, this is resisting falling out. I'm going to just resuming because the video was going a little long, my camera seems to stop. Okay, so I'm going to put the bearings back in, in the manner which I believe they fit. And once that's in there, free to rotate. I'm going to use Q-tip like I said. Okay, line that up at the top of the knife. I'm going to line these backspacers up because, as I mentioned before, they do not just fall into place. Um, you have to be oriented, orientated, or oriented correctly. Um, let me see. Okay, so okay. I think those are together. I do this with an open knife. It may make my life a little bit easier. So as you can see, the backspacers are still not in. Okay, so those just snapped in now. And uh, I'm going to start with this side. I'm going to put this back in. I've got some oil dripping around here, so I'll clean this 
up after. Just gonna put that uh, pivot in first. If I can figure out how I'll well fast forward this uh, for you guys, just putting the knife back together here. Okay, so we got lots of oil on this knife. Hopefully, it uh, everything will go smoothly with it once this uh, is done being put together. Okay, I'm gonna go through and tighten these once I put them in the first time. I'm sure you guys know you don't tighten them completely the first time you put them in. You want to tighten them uniformly when they're all in. Because, um, yeah, that's the way you're supposed to do it. Okay, that's all the way in. So that pivot doesn't actually turn anymore at this point. Anyway, that's that side. I think that's a really cool look for the knife. Um, I don't know if anyone leaves their knives like this. Okay, that's a pretty cool look for that. A lot slimmer, I'll tell you that. And it looks kind of cool with the skeletonized handle there. I'll put the G10 on, just because that's the way the knife goes. But you probably could leave it off if you really wanted to. But again, I'll start with the pivot here. And before tightening that up, I'm going to do the T6 screws. Maybe what I'll do is I'll loosely put them all in first without screwing them. And then I'll just go over them quickly. I'm checking every once in a while, making sure I'm still in frame. So if I wasn't for any of this, please forgive me. Okay, and I'm just tightening these up. You could add some Loctite on here. Probably should. Maybe I'll go back and do that after. And I'm going to re-tighten up the uh, middle pivot, and then I'm going to adjust it. And, fingers crossed, this knife will be back how it was when I got it. I.e., super buttery smooth. First of all, this pivot is completely tight right now. I don't know if anything, if the knife will even move. That's unbelievable. The pivot is fully tightened right now. Yeah, it's it's fully tightened. It's definitely noticeably smoother. As you can see, perfect uh, centering on this knife. It, it it's not grinding anymore. Yeah, you know what? It's noticeably smoother to uh actuate. What happens if I a smidge loosen this up okay no so you gotta okay fair enough I guess you got to uh, you got to keep the pivot fully tightened in this knife that's what keeps the blade centering perfect because I just noticed when I loosened the pivot the blade centering went off it is very smooth uh, mind you I probably didn't use the right oil use gun oil but that's what I had lying around it is there's no sound anymore scraping when you open and close it. Anyway, thanks for watching. This was a long video, but just showing you how to take apart, clean, and put back together your Spyderco Southern. Uh, great knife. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Appreciate it. Please subscribe. I'll do more uh, knife reviews, uh, gear reviews in the future. Okay, thanks. Have a good day.